for me, the biggest problem with the Big Society Bank is that everything is going to be loaned out as usual. There's no actual community wealth creation by the, by the, by, by the look of things. It's, um, I think the term for them was social impact bonds. So in Big Society, we're given this idea that, uh, you know, the people will have more power over how their community is run. They'll have more say in it. You know, their public servants will be more accountable. It'll all be more transparent. But it doesn't say how that is going to take place. And it seems like if you don't like the way services are being run, then you run them yourself. You and your friends pitch a tender in and you run them. But you have to do it for less money than the government have been doing it on for hundreds of years. You have to do it with more transparency. And then you will be obviously be in this this guise of being, I suppose, in a way, a, a public or community servant. And um, this seems to be covering all the areas that our government has abandoned, which is the areas of real community care. So the investment arms of Big Society Bank, I think, are welfare, uh, worklessness, education, health, disability. And these are areas that, that the funding has been pulled on left, right and centre for the last decade on and more. Um, and it's because you can't make money in them. They're, they are community services for the vulnerable, for the frail, for those that can't maybe look after themselves or are having a bit of a bad spell and need society to help out. And our government and uh, the various private contractors that run government services have completely abandoned um, any real interest or investment in the care sector. And this is where big society is really coming in to fill the void. Um, but this is where these social impact bonds are quite interesting because obviously um, the bonds are the way by which your local group will be able to run, get money to run services. So say you had ideas to run a day centre for the disabled or you wanted to run a, 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 something to help people get back into work, retraining or reskilling, then you could uh, borrow money from the big society bank, which means you have to pay it back at interest, um, which means you know, you're, you're instantly you know, creaming off these new entities before they can even get going. There's no real proper incubation period being offered there, which is a disaster. Um, not only that, it looks like if your group deliver on their bond, so say you've got a named social impact you're, you're, you're looking at giving and you deliver on that, then it looks like the bank is going to pay the dividend back to the investor. So the private investor who put the money in in the first place is the one that's going to get the financial return and benefit from all the altruistic services the members of the community are going to step up and offer because their public servants have completely abandoned the services that they were supposed to be providing, which was obviously to have the care and well-being of the community as the highest priority. Instead, they've abandoned that and now they're... they're, they're, they're um, asking the community to step forward and fill that void themselves and then making out like it's an act of good governance to do so, which um, is, is such an incredible act of spin. It's staggering. Um, but it really doesn't take a lot of looking around to find out how uh, dodgy the potential for this, bit, the, this big society bank is. Um, and I think you know, one of the worst things is, obviously, that... It's yet again money being injected in at the top of the system to be loaned out at the bottom. This is what they did during the bank, the so-called bank bailout a couple of years ago. They injected the supposed massive sums of money um, into the into the system, but what they did into the financial system, but what they did was they injected it in at the top instead of at the bottom. So then you've got all the wealthy banks and businesses at the top holding onto the money saying, right, okay, we're looking for businesses and people to lend to who will then pay us back at interest. What doesn't seem to register with some economists is that you cannot incubate that way. And not only can you not incubate that way, you also cannot re-stabilise our economy by constantly loaning it money. Money has to be created to offset the um, unpayable interest that has been created by all this artificial wealth creation. Um, so I think Tony Blair himself, Tony Blair was on television a few weeks ago on the Andrew Marr show saying, and it's Tony Blair we're talking about here, so you know it's a fairly informed source, saying that there's over two trillion in liquid assets available in this country that is just not moving because the holders of it are looking to loan it out at interest. 
and they're looking for the healthy return. And, you know, people are wondering why there's cuts, they're wondering why money isn't, isn't floating around at the bottom of the system. It's because, as usual, it is all being held at the top, and there's absolutely no way for it to move from the top to the bottom when it's being um, offered on the basis of a loan with a, a, an interest return.